Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Esty, over here with Orlando Live, Orlando City Arts Factory. So much fun every year. Every third Thursday, we get to check out local artwork, local people, awesome energy. Again, awesome artwork. Now, here we have a box of doodles. How cool does that sound? It is an entire room full of doodle artwork, pop art. We have an entire room with diversity art. I know all of it sounds super mysterious now, but I'll let you in in just a few moments, all right? So let's get a few interviews, get to know the artists, and we'll hang out every third Thursday with Orlando Live. I'm with two lovely gentlemen. Now, from what I understand, you guys actually put on the event, right? The, the diversity event tonight. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Why did you bring it here to you know, the City Arts Factory? And kind of what does it mean to you? What was the importance? There's a big diverse group of artists in town. Okay. And so we wanted to do a show that really showed the diversity of medium, style, genre, everything. So that's what we wanted to do. And we love the City Arts Factory. We love what they do. We love everybody involved here. So we wanted to have it here. And Perfect. OK, so what encompasses diversity? Again, you were kind of listing them. So this is everything, the genre of art. Right. Yeah. Genres, styles, vision, mediums, you go down the list. Was there something that really stuck out to you that you were like, wow, this has to be featured in our diversity showcase at the City Arts Factory? Is there maybe something that really kind of blew your mind? There's a few of them. Yeah, there, there are definitely a few. There's more than a few of them. There's everything from the um, crosses by Dr. J over here. Okay, we have crosses on the wall. Fused glass. It's okay. uh, basically. And he uses recycled glass to make all of his pieces. Oh, recycled glass. I love it. Eco friendly. Hello. Yes. Yep. Yeah, and the man is a, is a plastic surgeon. He actually has a practice up in Longwood. He's a plastic surgeon and then he's an artist. I don't know what time he finds to be an artist. You don't see that too much, period, in no, the medical profession. You live here in Central Florida. You're an artist, correct? Yes, I am. I live Central Florida. Just got back from Memphis, where I got my painting degree. Uh, the work I've been we working on recently really kind of deals with desire. Um, the idea, uh, well, it's, it's more of an idea of fulfillment, you know, a uh, desire for children, kind of like maybe the option of uh, adopting children. Things that maybe um, are present in your life as a desire right now, but not yet physically present. So it, it's very deep and, uh, you know. I was going to say it's very deep. I mean, it's not totally like surface. Yeah. Like what you're saying is has several layers. No, sure. I mean, they're thoughtful, and that might not be communicated in the art to someone who looks at it, but hopefully there's going to be something um, something there to show you that it meant something to me, and maybe what it means to you is totally different than what it means to me. I'm a Orlando-based uh, illustrator, painter. Uh, awesome artist is what he means. Can you share with us what we are looking at on this wall? All right, so Corpus Interruptus, is, uh, it's a... It's a group show, it's uh, three artists that got together and collaborated in, with uh, portraits and uh, figure artworks. And I've been painting and you know, doing gallery work and uh, working with illustration mostly and just now kind of branching out doing more fine arts pieces and stuff like that. So. What inspires you with these paintings? Obviously the portraits of people in your life. Uh, portraits are pretty much primarily what I do and um, this time I try to take a, a Lucia Freud approach. Usually I do a surreal distortion but this time I was really more interested in texture and palette and just um, a little more emotional portrayal of the portrait as opposed to a weird twisting of yeah. portraits that I did before. So. Jeans, wait, what is it? It's artwork, not only is it jeans, also art. Tell us about it, it's so fun. It was, basically, I am looking for any kind of material to paint on. I do a lot of found art also, also, and jeans is one of those things that I had lying around, and I must paint on it. Who doesn't have like a million random jeans exactly. but that don't fit anymore? I'm like, one day I'll fit into them. It's a lie, I'm gonna send them to you. Yeah. And That's super cool. Now, what inspired you here, though? I see we have the girl's face. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I am right now focusing on 30s, 40s, 50s pinups. Kind of that fun era of womanly essence. And that's what I'm trying to capture in my paintings right now. The show is a biography. It's a show, it's all about my personal life experiences. And that's what I love, you were mentioning it's like a timeline. Now how did you get started in that? I loved you, you had a really cool story about what started your desire to kind of create a timeline of your life. Well, I show frequently in town. I show a lot of artwork. I do a lot of pop art, a lot of uh, fun uh, artwork. And I, people often say to me, they see a lot of uh, Pac-Man, a lot of wine bottles in my artwork, but they, don't see, they didn't think they saw a lot of Parker. So I decided to take that and turn it around and do artwork that's about me. 
And that's what this show, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, and that's what the show's about. It's, it's artwork about your personal stories. And this entire art show, it's all a timeline. It's a storyline. It starts in the side of the room, and it starts with w when I was born, and goes around the room, and then till today. So it's a chronological storyline biography of my life experience. So let me walk to... Uh... How about, let me see, let me see. Tomato soup cans. Okay, cool. I was right here. There we go. The tomato soup cans. <laughs> I like it. Um, well, a huge influence, in, inspiration in my life is Andy Warhol. And I really wanted to do a uh, tribute piece to Andy Warhol, but it's really been played a lot. A lot of people do Andy yeah. Warhol work. My personal reference to Andy Warhol is when I was in high school, I um, ended up skipping school, going to the Art Institute of Chicago, the museum, because Andy Warhol was visiting, and actually went and waited in line and visited with Andy Warhol. So it was, it was quite a personal moment. Now, when I look at your artwork, I picture immediately sitting in my high school class, doodling on my brown book cover with like the brown paper bag, right? That's so me. can you kind of explain that feel of, of why your art represents that? Sure, well, I've been, an all life, my whole life I've been a doodler, my mom was a doodler and she would sit us down and be like, what do you guys want me to draw? And she would draw for us. And that's how, I guess, that stayed with me forever. And I've never stopped. And so about 11 years ago, I met an artist who I told, like, I have all these doodles and I don't know what to do with them. And I just, I, I, I feel bad and I throw them out. And he's like, don't throw them out. He's like, get a box. And every time you doodle something, save it and then go back in, in time and look through and see what you like and then redraw it better, you know? And so I started doing that. Well, there's a lot of stories in every single drawing. Um, they're not as mindless as they should be. You know, doodles are supposed to be just mindless, random things. But a lot of the times, it, it, whatever's in my head or whatever I'm going through, whatever I'm listening to, a lot of music. I always listen to music. It's, it inspires what I draw. And so, and so here it is. Ta -da! And there we have it. Another fabulous evening every third Thursday over here at the Orlando City Arts Factory with Orlando Live, where we get to showcase local talent. Make sure you join us, mark it down, and we'll see you again every third Thursday. We have a blast. All right, so thank you so much for hanging out, watching us, and remember, keep Orlando awesome.